at the bottom right, formerly of the team OGS, a strong Terran player, well known in Korea as well as abroad. His ID is Quantic the STC. You can see a little bit of frustration there. As I mentioned before, the cleanest Q sign you've ever seen. Up at the top right. Member of the team, Quantic as well. One of two foreigners in this tournament. His ID is... Quantic Naniwa. Now, I got a lot of tweets I read during the break about people saying that don't wash your mechanical keyboard. That's true, don't wash your mechanical keyboard. I thought that was a given, but don't wash your mechanical keyboard. <laughs> Please don't do that. You can wash your QSAN or your like Windows keyboard, your Logitech keyboard that came with your laptop or something, but don't wash your mechanical keyboard. Don't wash your Black Widow. Don't do that. <laughs> Please don't do that. Now, uh, the STC is making a gas. And, ooh, it's going to proxy a second barracks, it appears here. Yep, definitely going to do that. Giving Naniwa a taste of his own medicine, going for a very aggressive opener here. The win rate for the SCC on this map is 0-4. Not that significant, but much more significant than Naniwa's stats here. It means he has not taken a single game on this map just yet. Core going down for Naniwa, not going for Nexus first. Is mining, of course, with just uh, two probes in his gas. Naniwa, one of the first players to start doing this consistently in televised matches against Terran. To get a faster Nexus. Feels that the extra gas is not necessary for him. And I really like this choice. Get the Nexus up faster. And in the early stages of the game, you don't always need that gas. Now this probe may be denied. It is denied, so he will not know about anything. And not only does he not know about this barracks, but he doesn't know if gas has been taken. It could be a one racks expand for all he knows. So Naniwa will now have to take a risk. Because to make a robotics before Nexus is a risk. And to make a Nexus without robotics with no scout information is also a risk. And that is how this matchup is played. As a Protoss, if you do not get scouting information, if you do not pile on scouts, you will have to take a risk. And the risk chosen here is Nexus. We do see that the STC already has concussive shells on the way. He will hide his Mars. will probably go with two. May wait for a third. We'll start Stim immediately as well, and we'll just push out Rallying Marauders behind. We'll probably pull four SCBs. No more, no less. And Naniwa is going to be playing things a little bit safer here. Uh, in some ways, you know, the, the tech choice to go for Robo before adding the two gateways gives you a little bit more vision, so some people might argue that's safer. But when you have no idea what your opponent's doing, to get the units out faster and to have them immediately is pretty safe as well. So he is going to go with two Marauders here. They have been hidden. Naniwa is actually going to hide a Pylon over here, which will give him some counterattack possibilities as well as the ability to potentially stop reinforcements once this hits. And he's only going to bring two SCVs here, actually. No, third one coming down. He's supposed to bring four. I don't know what he's thinking bringing three. It's crazy. Combat shields on the way rather than stim. And Naniwa has seen Marauders, but he has not seen the proxy barracks. And he will have to cancel his Nexus. Will he make that choice? No! He does not make that choice. His Nexus is completed. He had about a second and a half to make that choice. And he's going to try to save it potentially here. Even the STV is adding their extra DPS in here. Naniwa is not going to wait. His probes lead the charge. He's known for that. His probes leading the charge, but looks like he will actually be able to push this back. I think he will. More Marines coming, however, and this is a pure Stalker Sentry Army now. Where are the reinforcements? They're not here yet. Oh, the bunker will not finish. More Warpens for Naniwa with this next round. I think he will have done it. The bunker is cancelled and the STC's pressure has been held. He has held it. Now the STC's units in full retreat. They are weak. They are low in hit points. Naniwa going to continue the charge. His stalkers are very fast. The STC turns around his zealots. We're at the back. But he can still win this fight and he will. Nice micro from the STC but Naniwa kiting forward. I don't know if that's the best way to put it but he's stutter step microing his stalkers against the Marauders. Nice micro. A very good trade for Naniwa, who now has two Nexi against the one. Another Stalker is found here because he has that forward pilot from earlier, and the STC may find himself in the first round of Code A. The next round of units for Naniwa may end the game. There's no bunker in play. He hasn't even started one. He's going to try. He will try, but it will be too late. 
The STB is continuing that bunker construction. Naniwa is going to push his way all the way up the ramp. Combat shields have finished, but he wants Stim. Stim would be a much better, more useful upgrade to have right now. Naniwa needs to wait just a little bit longer here for another warp in of units. He can take out more SCVs. Will he deny the bunker? If the bunker finishes, this pressure will stop. He needs to target that SCV down. Well, there's so many SCVs here. If he gets the one, he <laughs> another one will just replace it, but he's killed so many SCVs in total. He killed nine. Now, Naniwa lost eight of his own probes, so the worker count is 31 to 20 because he's had double probe production with Chrono Boost for such a long time. This is a scary moment for the STC because he doesn't know if Naniwa is going to go up to potentially six gateways and attack him again. He doesn't know if he's taken up to Robo. Could even have done a Robo already. Could have a robotic support bay on the way. It is not yet known. And here we go. Naniwa pushing in, going for the attack yet again with his Zealots leading the charge. He knows Stim is not done, so he knows he will not be able to kite against the Zealots very well. Taking out several of these Terran units. Naniwa can replace these units so much better. He even gets the bunker. That's going to force him to spend 100 more minerals to replace it. But Naniwa lost a ton of army here. Right now, Naniwa's army supply 10 against 16. Another barracks going down for STC. Command Center is still not done yet. This is a very stressful situation for him as Naniwa's economy getting stronger and stronger by the moment. 41 probes to 23 SCVs. Stim is halfway done. Naniwa double gassing at his natural. Still no tech in sight. No robotics, no Templar archives. Uh, of course, you can't have Templar archives without the Twilight Council. I, like, was, I like basically said that because I was trying to... I almost said Citadel, but... Then I was like, no, it's Templar archives, but that's not right either. We do have the factory on the way for the STC. More gateways being added for Naniwa. He wants to hold the next push of the STC. He's going to get Forge and Twilight Council as well. But Gates first. And I like this choice because he knows that the STC is behind. And people who are backed into a corner, people are put back because they're behind. They're the scariest opponent to face. You don't know if they're going to just pull everything and go for the kill. And if you're not ready for that, you die. Naniwa just one win away of refacing Creator, getting the rematch against his Protoss opponent. And to play this one safe, I think, is the better choice, and that's the choice that he has made. He may even go for Dark Shrine, but I do not believe that will be his choice. I think he is just going to go for Charge right away. He knows his opponent's Medivacs are super late. Having Blink first, not going to be as useful. There is the Charge research. The Probe will try to scout. Now, when he sees only that many Marines, he's going to know, okay, you're probably pushing right now. At least your units are not at your natural. And again, smartly adds two gateways. Not going to add a Robo. Not going to add a second Forge yet. Just going to play this as safe as can be. Because he knows not only are the Medivacs late, that timing that you would normally face on this map, it's going to be late. But also, also, he's not going to have upgrades. He's not going to have any upgrades started. He doesn't need Double Forge right now. If he somehow had an engineering bay going during all of this, it would be unheard of. It would be like, well, that's insane. A premature stim trying to take advantage of the fact Naniwa is attacking the rocks. Naniwa smartly pulls his zealots back way early. More processes could learn from this. Look at that. That is, I was, I, I was just, I watched that unfold, and I just knew somehow that Naniwa, unlike other processes, was going to pull his zealots back first, and he did it, man. With only four units on the other side of the force field, why waste six zealots to kill four units? That's often what many crosses would have done in that situation. But Naniwa pulled back immediately. The SEC desperately needing medevac energy here to heal his units. Several of them almost dead. Many of them in the yellow. Naniwa now has Templar out. He's starting plus one weapons. He already has an upgrade advantage. The Robo is done as well here. Charge is done. And this is going to be tough for the SEC to hold a third base if he wants to make one. He has no bunkers right now either. Naniwa is going to see this wall off, and I feel will turn around immediately. He will not actually try to engage up against this wall. Repositioning there on the depot for just a slight moment from the SEC. If Naniwa tries to go here, this could be a mistake. There are double drops going towards his main. Yeah, it looks like he is going to go around. He spotted the drop with his probe. Now he may actually take out some of these units. They are going to have to lift. No storm. He's got feedbacks available, but there's not enough energy on these medevacs. They've been healing too much. Medivacs seem a little bit uncertain as to where they should proceed. The SCC only three supply behind, but as far as tech goes, he is weeks behind. Not out of this one yet, though. 
Ghost Academy on the way, as well as Storm at equal timings. The worst part for the STC here is he's so far behind in upgrades. He's just now getting one engineering bay, not two. Does not feel like he can afford that. This drop will be completely shut down. This is a really good map for multi-pronged harass, though, because of the choke points. There are so many of them. The Terran ever gets the better choke. On the outside, things can get crazy. Drops distracting Naniwa. Naniwa is distracted for one moment, and that moment is all the SEC needs to get the concave, but he knows I don't have enough units. I cannot actually fight Naniwa here. Naniwa this time not pulling his zealots back as quickly, but even so, he just has so many of them. Look at this. This is exactly why this is a tough map for Protoss through the mid game because it's so hard to engage. The low ground units always hit your high ground zealot heavy army. The Templar. Four Naniwa have started to build up a ton of energy right now. They're at almost 150. That means two storms each when that storm research finishes in just a few seconds. They've hit 145 in five seconds. They will have those two storms. Plus two armor on the way for Naniwa, who is at 1-1 one, one versus 0-0 zero, zero with plus one on the way for the STC. He's got a third base up. Will be running soon. He's going to send his probes over there right now. The double drop is in the north. Very vulnerable to feedbacks right now. But the way he's sending it in here, I don't think it will be swatted nowhere near in time, in fact. A scan goes down. He's trying to find Naniwa out of position. Naniwa will, in fact, be out of position. But he sends his units. He splits them well. And look at this. Those amount of zealots is not enough. I mean, the SCC has nowhere near what it takes to fight those 1-1 one -one zealots. Not even close. His drop is shut down. He sends it into the main, but there are more units waiting for him there. Naniwa started to take more of a supply lead here as he does have that third base up in power. The STC, though, does have the same. Four Marines, three Mirage at a time coming out for him. Needs to get more medevacs out as well. He just cannot quite afford everything here as he's trying to get his upgrades as well. And look at this. Zelts leading the charge. EMPs go down, but where are the EMPs on the Templar? They did not go off, and the Templar have two storms each. That means four storms available for Naniwa. Naniwa going from four gates to four storms here. And they do go down, all four of them. The Archons following, taking charge here. Naniwa may have overextended himself just a little bit, even with the upgrades he has. This is a strong Terran army. With the medevac healing power, Archons alone may not be enough, but he's chased it back. Takes a supply lead again here. The drop was completely shut down at his third base and at his natural. The STC in dire straits right now and this is the scariest part on the production tab see there is the robotic support bay transition is imminent he is going to start putting his high templar oh, well, that was a mistake he's going to start putting his high templar into the warp prism and once he begins doing that once he has the high templar in the warp prism they will be able to move around the map much faster they will be able to hide from emps and he may just use the Warp Prism for harass, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Much more common is hiding the Templar in the Warp Prism. Will he research speed? Very unlikely, but with the Robotic Support Bay, it's definitely a possibility. 62-58 is the worker count. The SEC actually taking a lead there, adding additional barracks, as well as a fourth command center. Naniwa has not shown any interest in a fourth Nexus yet. Does not need that Nexus absolutely yet. The SEC is trying to take this forth as kind of a, a statement of, I need to do something. I am so desperate here. I don't even know if he's switching to Colossi right now. That's what he's thinking in his head. And the reality is, no, he doesn't know if he's switching to Colossi right now. But that's what's happening. The switch has been made. It is taking place right now. He has a total of three Templar out, four Archons as well. So he still has Storms available, but he will have Colossi as well. Range is on the way. Right now, Naniwa about to hit 2-2. The upgrades of the SCC still at 1-0, soon to be 1-1. Naniwa will start plus three armor much faster than the SCC can even start plus two, very likely here. Still only has the one engineering bay. He's actually double expanding right now though, making a command center at the bottom left. This may catch Naniwa off guard. He's making a fourth now, but he's not gonna go up to fifth base. If Naniwa plays this too passively, doesn't take advantage of his upgrades and his economic lead right now, he may end up losing. Here we go, Naniwa moving across the map. Moving across the floor, across the border here. Will he go for the attack now that he has the Colossi? He's gonna wait for two Colossi with range. That is Naniwa style, whether it's at 10 minutes or 21 minutes. He's gonna hit the late game, two Colossi with range timing attack now. He's added to extra gateways, he's warping in five stalkers and three zealots now. Starts plus three armor. The upgrade advantage is in Naniwa's favor, two, two to one, one. 
And the first Vikings, the first two Vikings are on the way, but they are not even out yet. He has no Vikings. He has no answer for the Colossi. The SEC with so many medevacs in his supply right now, he's got a total of 12. Medevacs do not do damage, but the AOE for Naniwa is going to be strong. EMP is going down on the Archons. The Templar coming in here to close the distance. The Colossus actually fighting a factory, but without the Colossi, it didn't matter. GG, Naniwa takes the series 2-0 and will advance to the final round where he will rematch against another Protoss creator. One tick, Naniwa with the win. Picks up his cup and walks out. You can see the STC in the background there. He's gonna unplug his equipment and go home, accepting the reality that he will take fourth place here. It will take fourth place and we'll be in the first round of Code A with the potential to fall out and no free ride to the up and down matches. He will have to earn it. This is a tough and long road ahead for the STC to get back in the Code S, but Naniwa's story has not yet ended. Naniwa will have to face Crater again, a player he took a lead at earlier today. And basically, I mean, he actually had the series tied 1-1 and had a lead with a nice timing attack coming. Barely did not make the attack work. And that's why I say when I, I say he had a lead because he actually lost the first game, so don't confuse me. But his story does not end here. He will rematch the same player, and we will have a final epic PvP match to close out the night. Decide who will be in Code A and who will be in Code S. Naniwa going to go back to his booth right now and get set up and get ready because we are only going to take a quick five-minute break, and when that break is done, the final match will commence. So during this time, tweet at me at ProxyWolf, tweet at GoomTV, hashtag GSL, tweet at your friends, get on Instant Messenger, get on IRC, go post on the forums, go check out Reddit, talk about these matches, go on to QuakeNet, go to IRC.QuakeNet.net, I guess it is, I don't know exactly what the, the <laughs> channel is, but go to hashtag GSL there, the GSL channel on QuakeNet, chat with your friends there live, do all of these things, and get ready for our final PvP.